And so using, as you look at the bark, using the patterns on it. Some people like the really roughy bark looking stuff. Some people like more white. Some I've left with the rough outer bark and some I peeled the top layer so that you could see the inner more, um, you see the lines better, but then the white is gone. So depending if you want the white or if you want to really see the lines, it's nice to take the top layer off. So really the artistic part is how you play with it. what you see what you like. When we make these, some of the things I like to think about is um, when I'm making stuff, if I want to use certain things, when we make our outfits, when we make our um, cultural items, we would always have sort of, like traditionally, we had stuff that would tell about who you are. So a long time ago, before contact, we all had our own sort of paper pattern that would tell that family's pattern, and it would be passed on. And then you all know which kind of stuff that is. Certain designs or things that they might connect with you, you use those things in, in what you do. So as you're creating these things, the um, artistic side of it is developing the design for what you're going to use, for what you're going to make. And we have different options here of what you can do with your earrings. So some of the things that I've done is I've made geometric shapes, because on those geometric shapes, I like to enhance them, maybe with Menominee floral painting designs, or I will add to them, maybe um, wrapped with wire and a stone, or um, I want to go down and just sold it. There's a porcupine quill. I'll put a porcupine quill on a head pin, and I'll add that to it to decorate it, or you can make different kinds of shapes to either add to them. I still haven't decided yet, this is a pendant. You can make earrings, you can make a pendant. And I want to paint something up here, but it hasn't come to me yet. Sometimes I'll see it in my mind and know I want to make it. I made a pair of trapezoid earrings. In my mind I saw a trillium that sold first. It was a trillium painted on my trapezoid earrings. Um, and this was another thing I saw in my mind, was using the bark in ways to make designs. So I made these look like eagle feathers, and then I made a pendant to go with them. So um, unfortunately, if you want to paint or wrap, you'd have to take it with you and paint or wrap, because we don't have the time or the materials here to do that. Um, my daughter, just Big Apple, what is that called? Paints the apple at Walmart. At 50 cents a bottle. Big apple? And then we sprayed it with um sesta culture. Spray backer. Oh um Krylon. So that so that the paint wouldn't wash off. Um, and then that wire is, you know, like two dollars at Walmart. I get strands of the stones, whether it's turquoise or I like to use, try to use all natural, whether it's shell or tiger eye or turquoise or rose quartz or any of that kind of stuff. Um, so if you want to further decorate it at home, those are ideas. So it's up to you if you want to trace one of these sorts of geometric shapes, if you just want to cut your own shape, if you um, learn to find any other stencils here. If you want to make any sort of photo shapes, this could be like an arrowhead, you know? Mm -hmm. Whatever kind of part design you'd like to use to cut out your um, pattern for your ears.
Um, so you can make, when we make these earrings, we have the, um, the hardware to make them. Is, is physically putting an earring together is very easy, right? You just open the circle and put it into the hole. And then you open the earring hole and you clip it onto the circle. All of that part anybody can do. We have the materials for the loops, so we need two loops and one hook for each earring. So you need two here and a hook, two here and a hook for your set of earrings. If you're making a pendant, you just need one hook at the top, or one uh, when I put the quill on, I use a beading needle and I hollow out the quill first. I put the needle through the quill and then it's empty. And then you can stick on the head pins that we have. Then you just bend the head pin. So you have... A hole that you will make with a beading, I mean a glover's needle. Very gently poke the hole through the top of the bar. Not too, oops, not too close to the edge. You don't want to split that part. But this also is the careful part. Just making that hole with your glover stick. Then you will have a loop that's like this, and it's open. So you have to open up that loop and stick it into that hole. We have pliers that you can pinch the hole shut. And once it's on, you're going to add another loop, and then your earring loop. Because if you don't have the second loop, your earring's going to turn sideways. You gotta have that second loop so that they face both. Because the way the loops work. And I think many of you in here I know have already made stuff, so I can tell you what I'm talking about. If you don't, we have Janice who will tell you everything.